the 2022 European Championships. What a mixed bag for our one and only diva queen, Iteri Duberetsi. Yes, in the ladies, we had a Russian sweep. It wasn't perfect, but a sweep is a sweep. And the Iteri All Olympic podium is back alive once again. And in the pairs, the ship is sailing with Queen Tuberetsi at the helm as Teresova and Moazov got their shit together. However, it was not all smooth sailing for Miss Tuberetsi. As the judges had the audacity, the nerves to give her baby nepotism supreme, Diana Davis, the scores that she rightfully earned. They will be dealt with later. And then in the men, Tuberetsi received her most fatal blow as Quad Salto King Moritzi set his behind on the ice. He too will be dealt with later. But to start it off, we will start with the hardest part for Ms. Tuberetsi, the men. Honestly speaking, we wanted to give it to the Russian men. The judges wanted to give it to the Russian men. The Russian Federation had already paid for it. Checks had already been cashed. But the Russian men just didn't want to take it. The only one who was remotely motivated, and he was the only one who didn't even really need have to because he was already on the Olympic team, was Mark Kuntradik, who was Jesus Christ superstar. Yes, he too can walk on water, frozen water. It wasn't a perfect program, but he didn't need to be perfect. Mark is now not only the Russian national champion, but also now the European national champion. Actually, he's really looking like a dark horse for like a medal. If these men don't get it together at the Olympic, I think Mark might sneak in there. And then we had <laughs> Mr. Daniel Grasso. Oh my God, his jobs, his jobs. And he wants to go join Iteri Tuberasi, which I think is just, it's so perfect. I, I mean, he shouldn't even wait until the Olympic is over. Go make that switch right now, my man. Your jump technique is, is perfect. Iteri best book. But he jumped his way into that silver medal position. God bless your little heart. And in third place, oh, the most joyous of the men skating for me was Denis Velisiev. Oh, I too was jumping for joy along with Lambiel. Quad Sal landed. Perfect jumps, textbook jumps. Good spin, listens to the music, emotes to the audience. This is what I want to see. And then we got to the Russian men. After the short program, the Russian men were one, two, and three. It was a done deal. It was paid for. It was signed, sealed, delivered. But they just, it was just not yours. First off, we have my man. Yevgeny Semenenko. You guys know how much I love my little Semenenko. But he needs to help us help him. He just was not trying to help us. I mean, he does have the most interesting choreography mistakes out of a jump. But even that was not enough to save him. The, the, the jumps, I mean, I understand he's injured, which explains a lot. But the jumps were just not there. And... He's a scruffy, rough types of skater. So it's not like he has the skating skill, the components, the transition to lift him up when he fails. So unfortunately for him, that failure was epic when the jumps don't work. And I honestly don't see how the Russian Federation can send him to the Olympics. I personally would not risk it. And then we had Andre Mozilev, who did five points better than Sem um, Semenenko. But in my opinion, 
as the Russian Federation. He's a national bronze medalist, and he beat Semenenko at European. I'm sending Mozilev. Even though he also did not have the best long program, but I'm still sending him just for fairness alone. I think the Russian Federation is probably going to have them do a skate off, but I, I just don't see the point of it um, because Mozilev is has done more than Semenenko. I feel like Semenenko started off the season really, really good, and I honestly thought he was a shoe and I thought the two Mishan men were a shoe in that we were going to see Mishan at that board with both of his male skaters. But unfortunately, due to the injury, as the season progressed, his skating simply just digressed. And so for that, and while Andre Mozilev had the opposite happen to him, he started off the season very shaky, but he's gradually grown. And I feel like if we looked at the trajectory, I'm more willing to put more into Mozilev, especially in that short program, than I am Semenenko. But at the end of the day, it will be the it will be the, the federation that decide who they're going to send. And I don't know if Mishin has enough political pull to get Semenenko over Mozilev. Um, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, and another program that I absolutely love is, of course, Kevin Amos. Not a great short program, and the long was not perfect, but, oh, that long is beautiful. And if he could get it together and deliver that long program cleanly at the Olympic, I really feel like, along with the Jason long program, Valicia um, long program, this could be a men's long program that is a moment for us. So I'm definitely rooting for Kevin Amos to have a clean, long program for the men. Um, all in all, the men was was pretty good. The men was, wasn't as, because we know we sometimes get some really, really messy um, men long program where it's just completely uh, people sprawling all over the ice. But I feel like this really wasn't all that bad. So I, I really felt like the men really came and they stepped up and they did the best that they could. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully us having a clean men short and long program in the Olympics. I feel like the best outcome for the men, for every discipline at the Olympic, is for everyone to bring their best, for the judges to fairly judge it, and for whoever is the best on that day, not reputation, not coach, not federation, but whoever is the best on that day to be the winner. That's what I'm hoping for. But you guys let me know in the comment below what you thought of men.